All right. So the second objective for this lesson is in regard to our ethical obligations to ourselves. Um, when I lived in Arizona, I taught professional ethics at ASU in their in-person uh, master's program for um, behavior analysis. And this was one of the best classes to teach. I love, I love ethics. I love teaching ethics. I think that um, there's so much power in being able to orient ourselves to kind of a moral and ethical and professional code that um, doesn't dictate what we do, but it creates the conditions in which we are more readily able to think through the potential risks, the potential challenges that are going to come up and helps us make more effective decisions in the moment. Um, and as when I was teaching ethics, the thing that kept coming back for me is this idea that when we, you know, if we're only looking at our ethical code in a very narrow um, application, so it's, we're only, this only applies to the work that I do with my clients, or this only applies to work, the work that I do with my supervisees, or this only applies to the research that I'm doing. Um, and if you're not also looking more globally at your whole entire life, like your human existence as a person, if you're not, um, if you don't have a deep understanding of what, what it means to be ethical and make ethical decisions and engage in ethical behavior, then I feel like we're just missing the point, right? Because it's not just like, it's not a set of rules that's like, okay, well, if you don't do this, you're going to lose your license. It's like, oh, if you don't live this way, you're just... I mean, your life's not going to be as fulfilling, I don't think. You're not going to make the difference in this world that you want to make. You're not going to actually be the person who you say you are. Um, and it was probably through teaching these courses and doing some personal self-reflection that I realized like, oh, ooh, maybe I'm not actually living in full accordance with my values and my ethical, my, um, ethical bearings. And uh, maybe there's some work that I need to do. Um, so the three main areas of the code that we're going to look, look at are related to pr your professional practice, giving and receiving feedback, and effective dissemination of the science. The, one of the big issues, though, is that, you know, it's just our, in society, we, I think, are, we're so conditioned to be perfect at all times. Like, don't let anybody know that you have any problems. Don't let anybody know that you're doing anything wrong. You have to be perfect all times, blah. Well, the reality is that's, that's just ridiculous. Like we're all humans. We all make mistakes. We, we don't always make the perfect decisions at all times. We are responding to our environment and we are, we are a product of our environment and our experiences over time. And so, you know, this causes a, this kind of, fear, anxiety around talking about our ethical barriers, which um, I'm hoping we are, you know, through these courses and through having more of these discussions, we're able to dispel this issue and combat it and just really just start having more open, honest discussions. Um, because we're all, we're all human. The key, in my opinion, is that we're constantly striving for continual improvement. And being honest, being open, and committing to taking action to get better every day, just be a better human. Um, so as with any problem, it's important that first you accept that you have a problem and clarify the nature of the problem. Um, so I'm going to pull out the specific codes that I, that I felt were most relevant to the work that we're doing here. Um, and talk about my own personal struggles in these areas and based on the reflection that I have done. So in relation to our professional practice, the two codes that I thought were most relevant were 1.04 integrity and 1.05 professional and scientific relationships. 
So these two codes, there's multiple um, sub points under these two codes, but there were four specifically that I pulled out um, that were most relevant. And so the first one is that we are, we are encouraged, we are guided to be truthful and honest and promote that behavior in others. We are, um, we are guided to not implement contingencies which create conditions for unethical behavior, um, either, both in ourselves and others. Um, we are supposed to follow through on all obligations and refrain from engage, or, uh, taking on uh, anything or making any commitments that we cannot fulfill. And we need to be able to recognize our personal problems and other conflicts that will potentially interfere with our ability to be effective. Um, and so for myself, as I was reflecting upon these things, the, the, um, what came up for me was that, um, you know, I have a tendency or I have had a tendency throughout my life to just let things slide and not say the things that needed to be said when they needed to be said. And this has created um, in my life some conditions in which um, things were allowed to continue to happen, um, even though I knew that they weren't great. Um, and it doesn't, I mean, it's, you know, they're not major things, you know, people aren't dying, people aren't getting hurt physically or, um, but you know, it wasn't the best. It wasn't a, per, you know, wasn't a great example of what needed to be done. And um, I didn't always take the action that needed to be taken to address them. It's just like, okay, that's just good enough. It's good enough. It's fine. Just let it go. Um, I don't got the time. I don't have the time or the energy to deal with it. And, you know, it's, you know, it's not going to be that, it's not that big of a deal. The problem with that is that, you know, those things tend to snowball. It's a slippery slope. Okay, we let that go, and then you let something else go, and then you know, just as humans are are want to do, they you know those behaviors escalate, and it, the problem gets worse and gets more exacerbated. When in reality, if we, it just would have been handled at the, at the beginning, at the beginning stages, it would have been much easier to correct course. Um, the other the other thing that I really was thinking about for myself is that. In, throughout my clinical practice, I um, allowed the contingencies placed upon me to influence my behavior. And then I, you know, I placed contingencies on others that were not realistic um, and caused them to engage in behaviors that weren't ideal. And this, like these two things, the tendency to let things slide and these like um, wonky contingencies that I was under and I was placing others in are really the primary reasons why I decided to leave practice because I was, you know, I felt like I was way out of whack. I was way out of accordance with my values and I knew something needed to, needed to change. I just didn't know what, and because I was so, you know, enmeshed in that environment that I couldn't see what the solution was. I just knew that I just needed to boom, needed to get out of here and do something different and um, take a step back. Um, <clears throat> for me personally, I have a history of taking on more responsibilities than I can actually handle. And so this is where the self-reflection and the development of psychological flexibility skills has really helped me clarify and understand that pattern of behavior and the problems that it's caused me in my life and why I'm so committed to overcoming that challenge. And then lastly, you know, it wasn't really, in, it wasn't until I was able to kind of get out of the situations and, you know, it's just, you know, colloquial term, but, you know, hit rock bottom where I realized how deeply my, per, you know, my personal problems from, you know, stemming from my childhood were really affecting my ability to be effective and be efficient as a behavior analyst. Um, and it was, you know, impacted my clinical practice, um, which I feel, you know, very fortunate that I was able to, you know, take a step back and reorient myself to what really matters and, um, and move forward from there. 
the um, the second area and ethical codes are related to giving and receiving feedback. So um, we have a responsibility 5.06 to provide feedback to our supervisees. This applies to the people that we supervise and that we work with. Um, but we can also consider ourselves our own supervisees, right? We're, we're the managers of our own behavior. Um, and so we should, you know, be able to take that perspective of the observing self and um, watch what we're doing and provide ourselves with feedback in a timely manner. Um, and so, you know, just as we are supposed to be designing feedback and re reinforcement systems that improve performance over time and then providing performance feedback in a timely and ongoing manner, the, this also applies to ourselves. We should be designing these feedback and reinforcement systems. That, and that's going to be part of the PSAP is how are you going to monitor your progress over time? And how are you going to identify when you're not on track and the, the steps that you're going to need to take, the performance feedback that you need to give yourself um, in order to make the necessary changes to get back on track. Um, so for my own self, I have struggled with providing open and honest feedback in a timely manner. Um, you know, I just got, would get so caught up in the work that I was doing, get so caught up in my own responsibilities, um, and, you know, not really being present, just like, you know, you know, the rat, the rat in the wheel or the, you know, a hamster in the wheel, just go, 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 um, that, you know, I was just kind of checked out and not in the present moment. And so I just, even I would see things, I would hear things and just act as if it didn't happen. Um, and continue moving forward because I was just, you know, so busy, so overwhelmed and everything. I was just like, okay, it's good enough. No big deal. It's fine. We'll just move on. I'm too busy. I don't have the time to address that. It's going to be too hard. Blah, blah. You know, it's just going to like, you know, don't need more jobs. And so, you know, I would frequently avoid giving crucial feedback that would have been, again, like in reflection back, it's like, oh man, would have been so easy probably just to say what needed to be said um, and get it out there and so somebody could take somebody could take action upon take action on it but I think you know my um, the the uh, thing that I struggled with is this you know this taking on so much responsibility that you know if I gave feedback to somebody then it was going to be like I, I perceive that as then it's going to be my responsibility to follow up and I'm going to have to, I'm going to, I'm going to have to do all these things. And, um, but when the reality is, is like, just because you make somebody aware of something doesn't, doesn't give you the responsibility to fix it. It just means that you're trying to point out where, where challenges are and help uh, everybody improve over time. Um, okay, and then so the last ethical code is related to effective dissemination. So we as behavior analysts um, have the ethical obligation to disseminate behavioral uh, behavior analysis and disseminate the science uh, and promote its use and application and make information available through presentations and discussions. Um, for me personally, so in my clinical life, so kind of back when I was uh, a practicing behavior analyst, um, you know, I forget, like I would um, do a lot, I would do a lot of trainings. Uh, I would share information. <coughs> I taught at the university. And so I felt like, you know, I really felt like I had this on, on lock. And um, <laughs> However, now in my new role, <coughs> now in my new role, um, this is this is kind of one of the most difficult things for me to manage because I get over the top where you know I see these problems and I want to go like all in and just throw information at people. It's like, oh, you need to be doing this. That's wrong. You gotta, you know, you shouldn't be doing this. Blah. blah, blah. Um, but that's not any way to make friends and that's not any that's not actually an effective way to make any changes because when you you know when you go on the attack that usually means the other person was going on the defensive and the 
um, your goal of trying to make change in your environment and disseminate the science backfires because people will tune you out. And so now that I'm in a different, I'm a different type of position, I'm not in a position of authority. Um, I'm not working as a behavior analyst. I'm a, you know, I'm a substitute teacher and um, I'm a, and so that makes it a little bit difficult because my role is different. You know, and as a clinical director, I could train and, you know, tell, you know, share information with people and um, expect them to uh, do as I say, you know, or, you know, to um, implement the strategies that I was teaching. But in this, you know, in this environment, it's totally different. And so, you know, being that I'm in a small community, they really need services, but they lack the infrastructure in order to um, fully, in, you know, incorporate what, you know, what would be the ideal in my mind. Um, I've had to find ways to share information in a less formal way, less confrontational, just, you know, providing information as I am able, um, with the goal of gradually shaping, because I plan to live in this community, um, and, um, you know, live and die in this community. I, I really want to help gradually shape people over time. So they come to a greater understanding for themselves about the power of behavioral science and how it can uh, positively impact their lives. Um, so it's been, it's a challenge, um, but it's one that I feel is really important for me personally, and also more globally for behavior analysts um, in general, to be able to be more gentle in their approach to the dissemination of behavioral science, because, you know, when we go in guns blazing, it's very often that we are um, not, sorry, I gotta sneeze. Um, it's very often that our message isn't received in the manner that we um, want it to be. <laughs>